In today's tutorial, I will show you how to easily enhance water in your images using Luminar Neos Water Enhancer AI tool. I will cover all the different controllers and sliders to make sure that you can easily adjust contrast, brightness and color of the water in your images and create stunning results. Okay, now moving into Luminar Neo, where we starting in a catalog module and looking at our sample file. As always, here comes the reminder, if you want to follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and download the sample file now. Once you have it ready, add it into your Luminar Neo and we can continue. So here we're going to select the image and move it into edit module by clicking on edit on the top of the screen or using E on our keyboard. Here we're going to move into the main editing toolbar where we're looking for the new section called landscape. In the landscape section, at the bottom, we have the water enhancer AI tool. Once we click on it, it will open and we can start the editing. Now looking at the tool, you can see that we have a number of sliders together with an additional option called Refine Area. When we click on it, it will show us even more options and we will talk about this specific part of the tool a little bit later. So now let's close it and start from the top. The first is the Amount slider. And for the tool to work, you need to start by increasing the amount. So let's do that. Let's take the slider and bring it up and see what it does. Once you do that, once you apply the amount slider, the tool basically scan the image and look for any body of water in it. After that, it will create an automatic mask. You can see the mask by hovering over the image and it's represented with the red overlay. Now coming back to our amount slider, it basically controls the intensity of the enhancement applied to the water. When we push it more towards the right and increase the amount, it will basically add more of the new features, increasing the vividness and pronouncement of the effect. While when we bring it down, it will add less of the effect and keep it closer to the original scene. So that's our amount slider. Now, as always, if you just trying the tool, make sure that you really push it all the way so you can see what it does to the image. It's no point to just play around the 10 or 7 because you can't really see it. So go ahead, increase it and see what it does. Don't forget that just like with any other controllers and sliders in Luminar Neo, you can double click on the slider to reset it. So let's bring it back to somewhere around 50 for the time being and move to our following sliders. Next slider is called blue and as you guessed, by playing around with this slider, you can adjust the amount of blue you're going to be applying to the water. Now you can bring it all the way down, which will basically remove any of the blue from your water or you can take the slider and bring it all the way up and make it really crazy blue, just like you see now. Now again, we can reset it or actually let's bring it all the way down and move to the next slider, which is called green. Now this slider, obviously, will enhance the green tones and add them to the water in your image. So when we take the slider and increase it, when we do that, it will add more and more green and enhance the green in the water. You can, of course, play around with the combination of the blue and green and see what works the best for your photo. Let's try it. Let's apply some blue as well. And usually by combining both of them, you will get this really nice turquoise look, which is really typical for your tropical islands and some of these sunny destinations. Now let's go ahead and reset the sliders. So blue back to its original 50 and green to zero. Moving on through the tool, let's have a look at the original color slider. This slider allows you to adjust the contrast between the enhanced colors and the original use of the water. So let's say that we increase the blue all the way up and then we use the slider to basically just adjust it and see what works the best. So what you can do, you can play around with the combination of three of these sliders, blue, green and original color and look for the best possible result. So let's reset it 
Again, bring the blue back to 50 and move on the last two sliders in the tool or in this section, which are pretty much self-explanatory, but still let's go through them. First slider is called brightness. And as you guessed it, it will adjust the brightness of the water. By pushing the slider towards the right, we will make the water brighter. And then when we go the other way around, we will make the water darker. Again, we can reset it by double clicking on the name and the following slider called contrast will basically adjust the contrast in a water. By default, it's set to 20. And when we increase it towards the right, it will add more contrast by deepening the shadows and highlights in the details of the water. And then when we push it towards the left, it will basically crush the contrast and make it much more flat. While the possibility to adjust the hue and color of the water using the blue, green and original color controllers are great, sometimes I prefer to switch off the color adjustments and simply use the brightness or contrast just to adjust that specific part of my image using the easy and fast water enhancer mask. So I can basically just switch off these controllers and quickly adjust the brightness and maybe add a little bit of contrast to the water. Now, before we move to the next section, let's just reset everything back to its original values. And now we're going to open the refine area section. Now, before we're going to continue, just a quick reminder that today's tutorial is powered by our brand new Luminar Neo Travel Preset Bundle. This incredible bundle includes 12 preset collections and over 120 travel presets. These powerful presets will help you to transform your travel images in Luminar Neo in no time. To get them with the best possible price, follow the link in the description. And to find out more about them, visit our website cleverphotographer.com. Let's make it nice and visible and let's have a look at the different options we have here. First, starting from the top, we have an option between Draw, Erase and Restore. These options are very similar to other tools like Erase or Neon and Glow, and they allow you to adjust the purpose of your brush. Because what we're going to do in the Refine Area section, we're going to be adjusting the automatic mask created by the tool. So when we are on the Draw option, we can add specific part of the image into the mask. When we switch into the erase, we can now actually erase part of the mask. So for example, when I zoom in a little bit, you can see that the tool selected part of the grass as the water. So now I can very quickly brush over it and remove it. And I can continue. I can remove it here as well. Use the space bar to move around and remove it from the rest of the grass. Even further, I can also remove it here and go on. Now, finally, we have the option called Restore, and that basically allows us to restore the mask initially created by the tool. So now when I make the brush a little bit bigger, I can very quickly brush over these areas and it will restore the original mask. Now, since these areas are not right, let's go back to the erase and let's have a look at the options we have when it comes to brush. You should be already familiar with them because they are used across the application in all the masking options. And basically what you can do, you can adjust the size of your brush. You can adjust the softness and at the same time, the strength. For the time being, let's leave the strength on 100%. The softness we can bring down to somewhere around five. And let's again go back to our image and remove these areas so we can still keep removing these parts and see if there is anything else we need to adjust. Now, don't forget that just like with any other brush tool in the application, you can use the bracket keys to adjust the size of the brush and very quickly move around the image and adjust it. So something like this. Now moving into this part, I think everything looks good. This we're going to keep alone for the time being. And we can now very quickly zoom in even further. Have a look at this part right here. Adjust the brush again and remove this. Again, similar to all the brush tools in the application, you can also use the shift option to create straight lines. So now we have this shape of the roof here. 
or the tower. And what we can do, we can basically just click once here, then hold the shift on the keyboard and click on the top, and that will create a straight line between the two brush strokes. Again, we can do the same on the top, one click and then shift and another click, and that will create a straight line. There's a little bit more to remove here, and we can continue like this, taking care of this part of the roof as well. Then the chimney, again, using the shift, very quickly removing these parts. Now, I'm sure that you're getting the idea, so I can adjust this later, and we can move back to our brush. So let's zoom out a little bit, and let's say that you make a mistake and remove this part of the water here. Now, I already told you, you can go back to our tool and switch to restore and very easily bring it back. However, what if the initial mask didn't select the water? So what you can do, let's just remove this very quickly. What you can do, you can just switch to draw and then just paint the selection that you want to add easily using the brush tool. So just like that, you can add water or add the specific part of the image to the Water Enhancer Tool Mask. Now we can zoom out and we are almost finished. We only have two more controllers to cover. So let's have a look at them. We have the Mask Feather and Depth. Starting with the Mask Feather option, it allows you to adjust the feathering of the selected mask, which soften the mask edges creating a more gradual transition between the mask and unmask areas. Now, it's not going to be as visible. However, let's just zoom in, maybe even closer, and let's have a look at it. By default, it's on 50, and you can increase it all the way to 100, or you can bring it all the way down if you're looking for really sharp edges. After that, the second option is called Depth. And the depth option basically modifies the depth of the selected area, which can give a sense of layering or focus to a specific elements of the image. When we zoom out, you can see it by adjusting the depth controller, where when we bring it down, it will make it much less visible. And when we bring it up towards the right, you will see how the layering is much more visible on the image. Now, the mask feathering and the depth controllers are a little bit special and you really need to play around with them to see if they help to the overall result. However, one more time, starting from the top, start by increasing the amount slider to select and create the mask. After that, adjust the hue and color of the water using the blue, green and original color sliders. And finally, also adjust the brightness and contrast of the water to create an exact result you are looking for. And finally, don't forget about the Refine Area section, which allows you to adjust the water and select a specific areas that you want to be adjusted using the Water Enhancer AI tool. And just like that, we are finished with today's tutorial. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, and if you have any questions, make sure that you write them in the comment section under this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future content. One more time, my name was Jacob Bors. I was your guide on today's Luminar Neo tutorial, and I absolutely can't wait to see you in the next one.